Insane Clown Posse are the Nickelback of rap. Because despite actually having a few decent songs and generally just being kind of mediocre, they will forever be the butt of jokes about bad bands. Now, uh, I will give Insane Clown Posse credit for one thing they do really well, and that's atmosphere. A lot of their songs, particularly on their album Great Malenko, uh, build this idea of this haunted carnival with all these horrible, terrifying attractions. And I think it would translate really well to film. I would like to see an Insane Clown Posse movie set in a haunted carnival. I mean, they are a horrorcore band. So, of course, when they were given the opportunity to make a film in 2000, they made a New York gangster movie. There were some movies, terrible movies, movies so awful no one would touch. Then came a Matthew, sad little Matthew. Matthew decided these movies to watch. For every good movie. At least ten bad. Matthew gonna drag himself through the crap to find the worst ones there are to be had. Today's episode: Big Money Hustlers. <sighs> whoop whoop, Internet! I'm called Matt, and today we're taking a look into Insane Clown Posse's first foray into filmmaking: Big Money Hustlers. Big Money Hustlers came out in the year 2000, I guess right around the height of ICP's popularity. I mean, they've sort of always existed just off the mainstream with a very loyal fan base, but 2000 was when they were getting the most attention from the mainstream. They had to strike while the iron was hot by making a movie straight to video. The film was funded by Island Records and it never saw theaters. In fact, the movie did better as a soundtrack than a feature film. The only screenwriting credit goes to Violent J under his real name, Joseph Bruce, but a lot of actors have additional dialogue credits, which means, God help us, this movie was heavily improvised. It is the sole feature film of John Caffarillo, who's otherwise known for some Ramones music videos. Didn't even get to come back for the sequel. That said, they got some pretty notable names attached to this project. John G. Brennan of the Jerky Boys, Harlan Williams, pro wrestler Mick Foley, and, you know, basically anyone else ICP liked. Hard to argue with that decision. Also, I know I review movies in low quality all the time, but this is the resolution it streams at on Amazon Prime. It looks like a bad DVD rip, and I can't find any evidence of it ever being available in higher quality. And so... Hocus Pocus on with the show. Those aren't the lyrics, but it's Insane Clown Posse, so I kind of doubt anyone's gonna correct me. Unless the Juggalos find this video. Welcome, Juggalos! Here's Big Money Hustlers. The movie opens on a funeral, and it's the super funny ha-ha joke of the church being greedy and guilting people into giving up their money. Like, I get it, this is a fair criticism of the church, but like... Everyone's already made this observation. Anyways, turns out it was one of those Bet you're wondering how I got into this situation and we get a flashback to the rest of the movie. We meet Violent J as Big Baby Sweets, a crime lord. And these are his sidekicks. Lil Poot and Big Stank. Alright, that's the level of comedy we're on here. Let, let me just, uh... <clears throat> <clears throat> <laughs> Lil Poot. <laughs> what you need to do right about now is raise the fuck up out of here and don't come back without my motherfucking money. And uh, tell daddy I said hi. Uh, 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 Miss Sweets, um, my mama said to uh say hi and she he gonna see you in church on Sunday. Aha! Uh -huh. It's his mom. Sure would be cool if that joke hadn't been done better in better movies. It is kind of funny that they drink 40s through silly straws. Anyways, next we meet Shaggy 2 Dope as Sugar Bear, a cop who just got transferred to the NYPD. And I have two big problems with this. Number one, they made Shaggy a cop. 
And this isn't another Matt bitches about the police rant, although since we're here, fuck the cops. Like, I get them doing a crime movie since they rap about, you know, committing a lot of fucked up crimes, but if you're gonna have this hard street criminal persona, it doesn't really make sense to play a cop in your own movie. Number two, they didn't make Violent J a cop. ICP buddy cop movie? Strange, but okay. But putting these two opposite each other makes no sense. They both wear their classic clown makeup, and they both use a lot of classic juggalo symbols. Big Baby Sweets has the little hatchet guy plastered on a bunch of his stuff, but you also see Sugar Bear wearing it? It makes it seem like the two are connected somehow. Like they're working together, or they're the same person or something. But that never happens, they're just very similar enemies. Also, this takes place in New York, that place ICP... famously are from. I mean, technically they're not from Detroit either, but that's where they claim. Why would you set this movie in New York? Oh, and Sugar Bear talks in rhymes. Now I'm supposed to be starting work here this week. Looks like you got a little jelly donut shit up on your cheek. You better need my help and needin' it nifty, cause shit on your force is a little bit shifty. Sounds like your problems ain't the streets. Sounds like your problems is that motherfucker Big Baby Sweets. Because Dolomite. You know, Dolomite doesn't rhyme everything he says. He's sort of a poet, you know? Uh, occasionally he'll, you know, freestyle a poem, or even just, you know, come up with a rhyming phrase. But it's not every single thing out of his mouth. That character exists. It's Krakatage from the Cheat Commandos. You can't shoot and you can't fly. If you came with us, you'd probably die. <laughs> the name is Sugar Bear. And it's sweet and fuzzy like a pear. Psst, Sugar Bear. It's, it's peaches that are fuzzy, not pears. And he meets his new partner, Harry Cox. Dead Cox, I said, you fuck. Officer Harry Cox, now. Nah, still not funny. Harry takes Sugar around the city, notably to Donut Hut. Because <laughs> cops like donuts. <laughs> it's a hilarious stereotype. Everyone likes donuts, dumbass. And I mean everyone, including the Misfits. Yeah, the Misfits are here. Th they don't do anything, and then they leave. Pointless cameo. And then Sugar fights a robber dressed as a gorilla, which is possibly the most reasonable thing that's happened so far. Big Baby Sweets has a meeting with his people. Hopefully all y'all bitches are familiar with each other, but in case you're not, Allow me to introduce each one of you. You know, so the audience knows who you are. Of course, it's just a series of zany gags. One or two are kind of funny. I like that one of the bad guys does infomercials, but it's all jokes that add nothing. Oh, and you know, titties. See how I hooked y'all up? I ain't even have to do that. No, you right. Our movie's the shit. You showed us like 10 seconds of a porn star, topless. I could just... Watch real porn, and it'd be in HD and not whatever the fuck this resolution is. Our movie's shit. And the next scene's in a strip club, which has, like, way more titties. Although they're kind of hard to see because of the lighting and 240p resolution. Also, the strip club is playing insane clown posse music, which just raises so many questions. But one of the strippers is fat, and you know what that means. Well, maybe not, unless you're familiar with ICP's music. See, it's sort of insane clown posse lore that Shaggy's really into fat women. So, she's the love interest. I don't know if this is a fetish, or a joke, or one of those fetishes you try to play off like it's a joke, but it's actually really definitely your fetish. We're just gonna, um, skip this scene, because, frankly, I don't want to see POV shots of either of these people fucking. Anyways, Big Baby's people are destroying the town as revenge for arresting the ape boy. So Sugar shows up to arrest him, in bed, with Big Stank. And Little Poot shows up with baby oil. 
this isn't played like a joke, okay? It's not like they were doing something normal, but the second he walked in, it looked like they were gonna have gay sex. Or even just, you know, two men being affectionate, and then another character sees it and is like, Whoa, what are they, gay? It, it honestly seems like they were just about to have gay sex. Which, uh, I mean, more power to them. Just seems a little out of character for this movie. Unfortunately, they can't hold them on anything and have to let them go. Well, let's hope they don't want to retaliate and get revenge by taking more innocent community lives. can't act like that's weird. It's clearly intentionally weird. But like, why is it intentionally weird? Straight? I'm straight? I'm not so sure about that given a few scenes ago. Of course, they plan revenge on Sugar, so they call two ninjas. If you kill him, the movie's over! Oh god, please fucking kill him. Whoa, calling people from your car? Can you imagine? How wacky. And of course, the ninjas lure in Sugar's girl with food. Because fat joke. Of course they kill her, and Sugar is so distraught, he quits the force. You ain't nothing but a sad, sorry-ass Dolomite wannabe. Oh, are we gonna acknowledge that he's just doing Dolomite? <laughs> We're doing a lot more than that. Rudy Ray Moore himself shows up as Dolomite, and it devolves into one of my scripts. I am the ghost of Dolomite. Ghost of Dolomite. And I ain't lying either. Shit. Dolomite ain't dead. He lives over in Las Vegas, man. What the fuck you talking about? Motherfucker, I know goddamn well I ain't dead. I don't write the shit. I'm paid to perform it. You wanna know? Ask this motherfucker what's going on. Guys, will you please just stick to the script? Cut! Gotta say though, he brings up a good point. Damn yeah, man, you don't know what I've been through with Big Baby Sweets in his game. And frankly speaking, I couldn't give a good goddamn. So Sugar trains to get back to the force. Dude, it's been like two weeks, he can't possibly be that out of shape. This could have just been him going on vacation. And to signify he's ready to be a police officer, he beats up a poor person. And then there's this really long, really dry scene where a scientist gives Sugar a bunch of technology to easily get rid of all of Big Baby's men. Glad this was all introduced immediately before the climax so the writers didn't have to think too hard about how to defeat these guys. Like, they had an idea for the shotgun guy, and Big Stank and Little Poots ends up being a joke about their parents getting upset at them, but he also just has a ninja killing gun to kill the ninjas. Is the joke that it's... lazy? Also, I cannot explain this, but they play Ghetto Boys assassins over the kids' parents chewing them out. Then Sugar Bear fights pro-wrestler Mick Foley. And also he has an ICP tattoo? Which just raises more questions. Luckily, Sugar gets a big piece of wood through his leg and jabs it into Mick's heart. So, um, there's this running gag where every time someone says Sugar Bear, this heroic music sting plays. Sugar Bear! Which is kind of funny if no one acknowledges it, but increasingly throughout the film, characters react to it, comment on it, and it ends with Big Baby shooting the guy who keeps playing it. Which kind of ruins the joke when you draw attention to it. Not that it was a super original joke in the first place, but it's better than what we got. Anyways, Big Baby's mom from the beginning of the movie shoots him. Holy shit! You did it! It took the whole movie! But you finally had setup and payoff to a joke that worked. 
Congratulations! But Scooby-Doo Twist, under the makeup Big Baby Sweets, was Officer Cox. Anyways, the flashback ends and we're back at Big Baby slash Officer Cox's funeral. Do criminals get funerals? Seems like a lot of sad people for a known crime boss. And of course, Sweets is still alive and there's a shootout in the church. And that's Big Money Hustlers. What the fuck? It's one thing when no-names make movies where every single decision is wrong, but it's another for such well-known people to do it. This is such an ass-backwards movie, I have no idea why or how they made the decisions they did. It's got the sense of humor of, like, a late 90s, early 2000s kids movie? Like, tonally, it reminds me a bit of the Matthew Broderick Inspector Gadget. But, written by Insane Clown Posse. So, a bit weirder and a lot more vulgar. I'll give ICP some credit, they made the movie they wanted to make. This is a uniquely Insane Clown Posse movie, and that's sort of admirable. I just don't know why this is the film they'd want to make. I've seen this movie twice, once with friends and once to write this script, and even just watching it with my friends, I could tell it's one of those movies that's way, way more enjoyable with other people. Like, it's a hard sit to be sure, but it's the type of hard sit that's kind of fun when you're with the right people. I'm not saying run out and watch it now, it's not a fun bad movie. But if you and your friends are as masochistic as mine, it can make for a good time. God damn, ICP. Uh, if you like ill-conceived vanity projects starring shock rob groups and black and white face paint, I reviewed Kiss Meets the Phantom of the Park a movie that actually takes place in a spooky carnival. And, uh, this movie's really wiped me out. No, no, no more horror core. Wake me up when I can talk about metal. is over the money. Whose money, Mr. Big Baby? My money, motherfucker! So I don't usually try to match the soda to the movie I'm reviewing. Sometimes there's incidental overlap, but usually it's just whatever I've got in my fridge. But I knew if I was gonna review the Insane Clown Posse movie, I needed Fago Root Beer. And they just don't really sell that near me. I damn near ordered a whole case of the stuff from Detroit, but it turns out Cracker Barrel sells the old-fashioned glass bottles of Fago root beer, so here's to you, insane clown posse. It's just root beer.